what you say. Happy United Nations Day, everyone. 61 <laughs> years of fighting for peace in the world. It has been an important instrument of American foreign policy all this time, and it's really shameful that the president and the current administration are spitting on it the way they do. It is not shameful that anybody... But if, Kofi, you had, if you had an... Listen, Kofi Annan really, said just, it best. Hang on a second. We can't... We can't the poor America, she can't stay in Iraq and she can't leave, and this is the illustration yeah. of it. It's well, a, we may very yeah. well be in a... The, it's the a it sounds like now. both are saying we're going to leave. Yeah. One saying two years, the other the saying... The Choi the choice faster. is increasing brutality or the helicopters leaving from the roof but of the embassy. Also, I also point. absolutely disagree with his, his uh, portrayal of the reason we went in there as some sort of empire-building activity. That's BS. Really? And you know it. Yes, it is BS. The fact is that there may very well have been. And, and I cannot swear that I know what was in the mind of every single person who made the decision. I'm not and saying it may very, conscious. And it I'm may very well also society. have been. It may very all, well also have been that people did wanted to go into Iraq even before they wanted to go into Afghanistan. There was another plan there. I think that's true. But let's give them at least the, the credit to think about the possibility, just the possibility, that what they wanted to do was to help change the world by by planting seeds of democracy in a place that they had never grown before. Would that be the worst thing in the world? No, sir. Okay. No, it would That's not be, all. but That's I don't think that bombs are the seeds of democracy. And here we well, go. you and here may we have go to again. plant them with, that, with, that, with uh, breaking up the ground. And here we go again, arguing about what's happened in the past instead of talking about what we're going to do moving forward into the future. Well, well actually, it's, it's not a bad discussion to have because I, I think you know, Tom's contention is that it's a viable policy to plant seeds of democracy. And from what I hear from, <laughs> although, what, although oh, I, from what I hear Jack saying is that, uh, that how we did it wasn't inappropriate and, and clearly so far not a successful but, but what I recall from the 1990s, Aaron, when Bill Clinton was president, was that back then it was called nation building, and it was a bad thing. So either are we going to are we going to have honesty about this? Are we going to have a consistent position? But with about Bill what Clinton invading foreign countries, and, and everything is reduced to the perennial good cop bad cop struggle between the Democrat and the Republican Party, and nobody deals with the issue. Well, old Yugoslavia, by the way, is you know I think they they look at it and think that they were attacked by NATO. Uh, our troops are still there. Uh, yeah, that's okay, an let, me, let me ask you a related question. And I want to go to Terry. The cost of the of this war is estimated at at in excess of one trillion dollars, the projection, especially when you include the cost of taking care of the veterans uh, in, in over the decades ahead of us. Um, and, and you've talked about leadership, you've talked about the budget and financial issues and sacrifice, and I think one comment you made, Bill, was we weren't asked to sacrifice. Can a Republican or Democratic president, can, can there be leadership in this country that goes to the American people and says, this is an important action to take, it's going to cost us this much, and we want you to, we want all Americans to contribute towards this cost. We're going to spend a trillion dollars, maybe more, and we want everyone to chip in now to fund this. Can this president, or can any president do that, or is that impossible? Tom? I do not believe this president can. I believe that he broke his pick on this. I believe that when he said, first of all, we were going in for uh, weapons of mass destruction, and that turned out to be inaccurate. I don't know that he knew that it was inaccurate, but it, w it turned out to be inaccurate. And then when you shift at that point and say, you know, really what it was all the time was we were going in there to um, uh, nation build, if you will, and to uh, uh, make sure that we could plant those seeds of democracy. It, once that crack in, in the veneer appears, the crack of your credibility and in, 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 in that veneer of credibility appears, it is very hard to put it back together. And so, any, no, I don't think this president can, can do any, it. Could any, and I, and I want you two to answer the question, too, about this president and any president, irrespective of political party, can, in terms of leadership, can any president politically say this is what it's going to cost to the American people and this is the sacrifice I want you to make. If you recall, the sacrifice we were asked to make after 9-11 was to go out and shop, which was definitely a radical change from sacrifices we've made in previous wars. No, I think the answer to your question, the answer to the first part is, can this president? Yes, I think he could. Will he? No, I don't think he will. Can any president? Absolutely. And we've seen it uh, twice, at least twice in the last uh, hundred years in this country. In 1941, when we were attacked at Pearl Harbor, our military was in, was in uh, maybe 30, 43rd, I believe, in, in terms of its size worldwide. 
Five years later, not only was it the largest in the world, it was as large as all the others could put together. And the reason was we had a president who stood up and said, you know what, everybody's going to have to sacrifice. We're going to have a draft, and everybody's going to go serve. If you're not serving, you're going to have to go work. You're going to have to pay taxes to pay for this buildup. You're going to have to uh, ration gasoline. We're going to have curfews, and we're going to have all these other things. Is that and it politically was possible today, or is that political suicide? No, I think it's politically possible. John F. Kennedy did it again with the Apollo program in 1961, and he was, of course, famous for having said, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. I think we need and a whole new pigs. <laughs> that, well, that I, I think we need a whole new paradigm in this country where we do find people who are leaders um, on, on issues and will stand up and take take political. Can they get elected? Um, yeah, I believe they can. I believe that you can get elected by being honest with the American people. And quite frankly, you know, I'll salute the congressman for standing up on the issue that he believes in and, and being strong there. But I believe that you can get elected. And I, I, I believe that uh, we do ourselves a disservice when we underestimate the American people because the American people will do what we ask them to do. Gosh, I, I love hearing that optimism. Jack, please. I agree with Bill that you might... It might be possible to get elected telling the truth, so I'll tell it right now. The Democrats and the Republicans are incompetent. They've failed. They've completely, they've completely just about destroyed the country. I think we're in the worst fix we've been in since the Civil War in the 1800s. I think it's really awful. I, I just don't, I don't, I don't know words to describe the incompetence of the national executive and the various parts of government. It's like watching a, a wedding cake collapse in slow motion. I have one last question about the war. If it looks like it's going to be a civil war, is that preferable? You, you made some points, Tom, about the good reasons to go in. Is that preferable to what we had before we went in? Is that what you see? Because we went from these no-fly zones mm -hmm. to all of this expense and loss of life, and now it looks like a civil war. With, with 2020 hindsight, it's obvious what we should have done. I can't say I thought of it at the time, but if we were going to go into Iraq, what we should have done is arrested Saddam Hussein, took the next nastiest guy in line and said, put a gun to his back and said, congratulations, you're president now. Now here's your instructions. And he could have made that vicious bath party machine work and work for reform. And instead, we destroyed the entire political structure of the country. And now we say, be free. Let there be democracy. And instead, what there is is civil war. I mean, what a surprise. Charlie. Along those lines, do we... Uh, well, build... oh, hold on. Did you want, do you want the I'm others sorry? to respond, or well, is that enough? Yeah. What, uh, I thought Jack gave a good response. I did, too. No, I think... I'm with Yes. All right, go ahead. No, I'm, just teasing. I'm, just, I'm just teasing you guys. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, could you ask me the question again? I... Are we better off than we were before? If it is, some people say civil war is not that bad compared to what Iraq was. I, I, think we're, I think we're substantially worse off than we were before, and that's not to say that Saddam Hussein wasn't a very bad person who needed to go and who, who, who in some senses was a threat. But what we have now is a very destabilized region, and I would argue that part of the reason why Iran and, and, and North Korea feel so emboldened now to do some of the things they're doing is because they realize that we're bogged down in Iraq, and they realize that this policy of going in and, and this sort of a reverse domino theory that we'll set up a democracy and everybody else will become one isn't really working. Now, there's a lot of other things that we don't talk about um, in terms of destabilization of this region. For example, the Kurdish question. Okay, we're going to have we, we have a de facto independent Kurdistan up in northern Iraq, which makes Iran very nervous nervous and makes Turkey very nervous. Is that going to erupt into a larger regional war uh, when the Turks say, no, we don't want them to have their independence? Well, it's hard to say, but it's certainly uh, an issue that we're dealing with right now. And I think Colin Powell was on to something, you know, with the whole pottery barn thing that uh, when, when you break something, you bought it and you, we've inherited a real mess here. And the question we have to ask ourselves is what's going to be the very best policy to move forward to try to make the best of it? Well, I, absolutely, I certainly agree with that, and I would also say that the the idea, however, of a, a federated uh, Iraq, the, the idea of having uh, three states inside of one country, a Kurdish state, uh, a Shia state, and a Sunni state, al although there are problems, undeniable problems that may arise as a result of that, there are also possibilities, and some on the positive side that may develop as a result of having that kind of configuration. Because it is true al uh, that although the Turks would get extremely uptight about having a Kurdistan that is semi-autonomous, and that the Iran would take advantage of the Shia, the southern part of Iraq, the Shia area, in fact, Iran is taking advantage of the Shia area right now. Iran is calling the shots throughout the Middle East. We are unable, I absolutely agree, we are unable to, to act as decisively as we otherwise would because we are bogged down in Iraq. But if we were to, to, to leave the country in, in that kind of a federated state, we don't know that the, that the overall 
geopolitical climate in that area would not settle itself. 